we make about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is. Hello, and welcome to Candidates Upfront. I'm Judith Cranus, a member of the League of Women Voters. On June 2nd, our primary election is coming up. This is the election in which the main political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, choose their candidates. You must be registered to vote as a Republican or a Democrat to choose your party's candidates. However, everyone, no matter your party or lack of party, Every registered voter may vote on ballot questions, and there are five of them in the city of Reading this year. This year, Berks Community Television and the League of Women Voters of Berks County have joined forces to provide you with interviews of all candidates in contested races, and we will provide information on the ballot questions. There are contested races this spring in the 9th Congressional District for the Democrat Party, and in the 127th Pennsylvania House of Representatives District for both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. In each district, the candidates will all get the same questions and all have the same amount of time to answer each one. We have done this so you can compare them. And please note, if you're not yet registered, you have until May 18th to do so. And if you need more information on registering or voting, visit elections at countyofberks.com or you can phone our Berks County Department of Elections Services at 610-478-6490. And this year, you can vote by, by mail-in ballot. In the mail-in, you don't need any reason to do it, you just have to want to do it. And that application is available on the same website or through the same phone number. Now, please do note that the exp opinions expressed in this interview are those of the candidate not necessarily the opinions of the League of Women Voters or of Berks Community TV. Our interviewee in this program is running in the Democratic contest for the 127th Pennsylvania House of Representatives. That district includes most of the city of Reading and the borough of Penhorst. And we are ready for our interview. In this program, we will be talking with Democrat Manny Guzman. He has four opponents, Cesar Cepeda, Robin Costenbader Jacobson, Robert Melendez, and Raymond Baker. Mr. Guzman, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate BCTV and also the League of Women Voters for putting this forum together. Well, thank you. Our first question is why do you want to be a state representative and what are your qualifications for this position? We'll take a minute for that one. Sure, thank you. So uh, for me, uh, being a state representative really goes back to who I am as a person, as an individual who grew up uh, with a single mom of five who saw her struggle to pay the rent, to pay the electricity, uh, to buy medications for our abuela. And so for me, uh, those visceral moments is what propels me to want to serve my community and fight for women just like my mother who struggled uh, but did the best that she could to raise five single uh, five kids on her own and so just like her I know that there are thousands of other women not only in the legislative district of the 127th district but also across the entire commonwealth so my qualifications obviously I'd love to get more into it but former Reading School Board member, and more importantly, I'm someone who believes in leading with his values. Thank you. What should our voters know about this office? How is it important to them? So there's a variety of, of ways that this office is important. Number one is the state representative is literally the gatekeeper to the state bureaucracy of services that are available to all citizens of, of Pennsylvania. So whether that be the DMV, whether that be getting a birth, a birth certificate, whether that be taxes, et cetera, your usual first stop in those issues are contacting your state legislator. So 
number one, constituent services is at the top of anybody's list who wants to be a great state legislator. Second, I would say that you also want to have a state legislator who's going to fight on the right side of the issues and fight for uh, the, the things that people in his district care about. So whether that be increasing the minimum wage, fighting for schools that are funded, government that works. Uh, so you want that in a state, rep a state representative. And finally, you want somebody in the state representative who understands that in order to pass legislation in Harrisburg, you need to build coalitions with, uh, with the other side. And I believe that I'm that candidate to do that. Thank you. What are the three most important things you want to accomplish as an elected representative? And we'll give you 90 seconds for this one. Sure, thank you. So, I mean, I think I, I, I already mentioned some of them. Number one, increasing the minimum wage uh, is a huge issue, not only in the legislative district, but across the Commonwealth. Uh, when you see that the minimum wage is still $7.25 an hour, uh, that means that there are thousands, millions of people who are living on starvation wages. And obviously, it's very difficult to raise a family on that. Um, so that's number one. Number two, obviously, fighting for schools that are fundy, fully funded and fully equitable. Uh, fighting for government that works is also very important to me, not only just because we need government that's for, by uh, the people, but also a government that looks like the, 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 represent, uh, the, the population that they represent. So in that regard, uh, I'll be able to speak to the majority of the, of the people in, this, in the 127th leg legislative district in their native language and be able to connect them to the resources that they need uh, in the language that they speak. So I, I believe that those are very important things that I want to bring to the table. Besides just being a progressive Democrat uh, and wanting to go to other areas of our state, let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, this district is a very safe democratic district. So the goal is, is that if we want to take over the legislature and start passing some of these bills like minimum wage, my commitment to you all is to go into places like Lancaster and help us elect even more progressive Democrats that could rep represent us across the entire state. Thank you. Should the state make health care accessible and affordable to all Pennsylvanians? And if so, how would you do this? Another 90 One, second question, a big topic. Yes, 100% absolutely. I am definitely in favor of Pennsylvania's version of Medicare for all. And again, I, I think I, I speak you know, pretty much for everyone. I think we all know someone in our lives who has dealt with serious medical issues. And um, I, I, you know, I see it firsthand just with my grandmother who um, you know, unfortunately has a lot of medical issues, doesn't have health insurance. And so every day it's a struggle for her to not only pay for her medicines like insulin or high blood pressure, but you know, just regular preventative medicines that she would just push off because she didn't have the money to go see a primary care physician. So like my grandmother, there are thousands in our district, millions more across the Commonwealth who are having such a difficult time with healthcare. And I believe that no one should have to go in debt because of the fragility of the human body. Uh, unfortunately, even though I'm a young man now, I know I'm going to run into my own healthcare issues eventually, and I want to have a system that's fully prepared to help millennials like myself uh, not only stay healthy during this COVID crisis, but also overcome any illnesses preventatively uh, in the future that may come. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the COVID crisis that we're in, and the County of Berks does not have a health department. And I'm wondering at the state level, should the state be requiring counties to have health departments and should the state be paying for that? You know, I would say yes, but here is the issue, right? The, the issue is, is that unfortunately in Harrisburg, uh, the reality is, is that both uh, the Republicans control both houses of, the, of the, both the House and the Senate. And so in a lot of these issues, um, in, in a lot of these issues where we see more progressivism, where we want to have items such as a board of a board of health and counties. You know, you you run into certain politicians in Harrisburg who believe that we should just open up we should just open up our our population centers again and just continue as business as usual. And so, until we as Democrats are able to start electing and challenging the mindset of some of these uh, career politicians who don't believe in science, by the way. 
you know, we're going to run into issues like this. So that's why I'm committed to helping us not only take back the control of the legislature, but help elect good progressive Democrats across the state, not only in the 127th, but all across the state as well. Now, following the census, our state legislators will redraw the district lines for state and federal officials. This has led to gerrymandering, districts that favor one party. Do you think this is fair to voters? And if not, what would you do to give the voters fair districts? Yeah, I mean, gerrymandering is an issue even here within the 127th legislative district. I mean, if you look at the district, uh, it cuts pretty much the entire city in half uh, and separates it. So for a huge population center like Oak Brook, uh, which is, I would say, literally on the south side of Reading, uh, for it to be in an entirely separate district uh, is totally incomprehensible, incomprehensible to me. And this is in a safe district. You know, when you go into districts that, you know, don't favor Democrats and favor Republicans, I mean, the gerrymandering is it's even more ridiculous. So I'm in favor of a commission. Uh, I know that that has been talked about in the legislature, but I'm in favor of an independent commission who can draw these lines, who take these decisions out of the hands of politicians and put them into the hands of people who um, stop counting prison counts in uh, a white, uh, white areas to increase their populations and understand that these, uh, these uh, districts are very important for representation all across the state. Thank you. Now, you kind of answered the last one, but since it's one of our questions, you can give it a, just sure, a few sure. more seconds, and that is, do you support raising the minimum wage, and what should the minimum wage be? So you can probably handle that in 15 seconds, since you've talked about uh, it before. Absolutely, uh, 100%. It's definitely a little bit more nuanced than that, but I'll do my best. Um, you know, I am definitely in favor of raising the minimum wage. I think uh, we also have to keep in mind, once I said again, the reality of the legislature in Harrisburg. That is that Republicans control both the House and in the Senate. So currently, you know, I would love it for it to be $15, but the reality is that for thousands of residents in our district and millions of people across the state, even if the minimum wage is raised to $12 an hour, you would see a substantial economic stimulus in people uh, in the low and medium level income bracket. So, you know, I, I'm in favor of raising the minimum wage. I would love it to be $15 an hour, but I still believe that $12 is a big win for working class families. And I'll work my damnedest to make sure that we get to that 15 once we take back the House and the Senate. Thank you. Let's talk about some safety net programs, things like food assistance, housing assistance, medical care, uh, evidence proven addiction treatment. Are these adequate in Pennsylvania? And if not, how would you change them? And should there be work requirements to get the benefits? And should you have to be a citizen to get safety net services? So to answer your last two questions, I'd say no. And those are unfortunately, uh, you know, talking points that lead to a lot of demag demagogy and xenophobia, because at the end of the day, those, the last two primarily point to either people of color or immigrants. And uh, the one thing I could tell you is that uh, both those uh, population groups uh, have done quite a lot for our community, not only in the 127th, but all across the state. But to answer your question uh, succinctly, yes, I do believe that uh, we need those type of healthcare safety nets. Um, the reality is, however, as I'll go to again, this is about electoral politics. And um, the problem that Democrats have is that the, to address some of these things, to give more funding, uh, to a lot of these programs. We're running against a opposition group who believes that uh, working class people shouldn't have a safety net, who believes that if you're poor, you know, yeah, you should pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but they don't give you any boots, to, uh, you know, to begin with. So uh, that is the reality in Harrisburg. And uh, I think once we Democrats start understanding that and start realizing that, yes, it's important to vote in this election, but let's make sure we vote in every single election. Let's vote for our school board members, our city council members, our county commissioners. You know, all those positions have a direct impact to the daily lives of our residents. Until, and until we start emphasizing the importance of voting in every election, uh, I, I, I don't think we'll be able to hit as much progress as I would like to see. We've all 
probably think that we should have, that our high school students should be successfully completing their diplomas, even in challenged communities, and ensuring they're equipped to gain employment in today's high technological environment. How would you help facilitate this as a legislator in Harrisburg? Yeah, so I, I think COVID uh, has shown a lot of cracks in the concrete in terms of not only our safety nets, but pro, you know institutions like education, where you see that now that COVID-19 has uh, pushed school districts towards more of a digital aspect of it, well, you have kids in our district who don't have laptops, who don't have access to high-speed internet. And so uh, those issues COVID-19 has really shown a bright light on. And so I believe personally that as a legislature, not only do I need to support efforts to help bridge that digital gap, but I also need to help bridge the gap in terms of letting people know that the K-12 model as we know it may not work for every single child. And that's why we have to make sure that there are other pathways for them to be, become better citizens, to earn a living, whether that's being an electrician, being a plumber, uh, being an automotive technician, you know, there are other pathways to success for, for our kids. And I've, I'm a huge champion in making sure that let's bolster our K-12 model. Let's make sure that we establish, uh, we reestablish the funding that has been cut over the years. But let's also prepare our students for the jobs of the future that will require creativity and innovation. And along the way, build, build resilience in them now so that uh, when the next COVID-19 comes around the corner, uh, we're better able as a society to um, brace for that impact. Thank you. There are inequities in the funding of our private, of our public schools. Yes, schools yes. in rich zip codes thrive, uh, schools in poor zip codes struggle. What would you do as a legislator to provide every child in Pennsylvania a quality education? Yeah, so I, I think the legislature has moved kind of in that direction with passing a fair funding formula. The problem with that fair funding formula, unfortunately, is that places like Reading, Allentown, Philadelphia, Bethlehem, Lancaster, uh, won't see fair funding for the next 30 years. So in essence, you lose, we lose a generations of kids um, because our school systems uh, and politicians in Harrisburg refuse to see the, uh, uh, the necessary uh, the necessary reasons why we need to properly fund our schools equitably. So I, I don't necessarily know any person has the right answer in terms of how do we get it fixed. My proposition is, is that the only way we ensure that people understand the importance of this is by building coalitions across the aisle, getting some moderate Republicans to believe in what I believe in, and proposing a bill, co-sponsoring it, et cetera, so that it gets passed. But in the current climate in Harrisburg, unless you're able to build coalitions with some moderate members of the Republican Party, you're never ever going to get any legislation passed, let alone something as monumental as this. Thank you. Now, many of our local legislators favor doing away with the property tax to fund public schools. How would you fund our public schools? Yeah, I, I, again, I don't think anybody has the answer or a silver bullet. I think one of the ways um, you know, one of the things that kind of bothers me as a former school board member is when people say, well, let's just get rid of property taxes. Uh, when they don't understand is that it's not an elimination of property taxes, it's a property tax shift to other higher taxes like a sales tax. Well, could you imagine in the COVID environment uh, if our school funding was tied to sales tax and now you have 33 million Americans who are on unemployment and not able to uh, uh, go out and buy, and buy things that they normally would in a normal economy. So I say that to say that those are some of the solutions that people are presenting, but when they're dealing with the actual reality of the situation, no one has yet found a more stable, more equitable way to fund our schools than property taxes. I'm open to see what those suggestions are, but to say over, overtly that we're gonna rid of property taxes would be a huge disservice to the Reading School District and other urban school districts across the state. Thank you. People never like taxes, we know that, yet they are necessary. No, they are. In this time of increasing disparity between incomes of well-to-do and the poor, is a flat income tax rate, as we have in Pennsylvania, still appropriate? Tell us why. 
You know, I, I don't think so, uh, quite frankly. And, you know, you look at just the district that we live in, quite frankly, in terms of the disparity of incomes. I mean, I live on South 4th Street and, you know, a mile up the road, there are homes, you know, that are worth 100000 to $500,000. Uh, so obviously the, the, the wealth gap is monumental. Uh, I probably pay more in taxes. You, Jude, probably pay more in taxes than some of our CEOs um, and other uh, well-off well -off Americans who live in Pennsylvania. And so obviously proportion, proportional to our income, of course. So, you know, it, that obviously needs to get fixed. But again, I, I don't believe that there is one silver bullet, one way for us to slice this apple. And one of the commitments that you have for me as the next state legislature is that legislator is that I will always keep my mind open to these suggestions. And when I find something that works, you'll always have a champion in me fighting for it. Thank you. And we're gonna keep our questions down to about 50 seconds if we can to make sure we get through them all. Sure. How would you address the crumbling infrastructure in Pennsylvania? We need to have more money uh, coming in. Uh, I know the governor has uh, proposed Restore Pennsylvania, which would help us move in that direction. But of course, we have some obstructionism in Harrisburg that's preventing those necessary dollars from flowing into our, to our district. So again, it's about going out, finding progressive candidates to run against some of these uh, career politicians and finally taking over both the House and the Senate. Thank you. Um, do you think the state should do more to keep our planet habitable? And what should it do? 100% 100, 100 absolutely. In fact, I'm happy to have the endorsement of the conservation, uh, conservation voters of Pennsylvania, which you see on the screen behind me. And so I'm proposing uh, Pennsylvania to adopt our own version of the Green New Deal. Uh, and so it's, you know, we don't need something, we don't need someone to reinvent the wheel. Let's take what is going on in the national conversation Let's mold it so that it's Pennsylvania specific and that it benefits Pennsylvania workers. And finally, let's have the courage to present the bill and then finally get it passed in Harrisburg. Uh, and so, I, you know, I believe that, you know, the days of fossil fuels, uh, you know, the fossil fuel industry getting a free pass, as long as I'm the next state representative, uh, I'm always gonna stand up to the fossil fuel industry and let them know that what they're doing is not only harming our planet, but also harming the future generation of our planets as well. Okay, well, the next question asks about that. Um, should we be decreasing the use of fossil fuels and carbon emissions? And I think we're gonna have to go to 45 seconds. We make it, not get everything in. Yes, ma'am, I'll do okay. my best. Um, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely, I, I do believe that is the case. Now, let's also remember though, right, is that a lot of those jobs are union jobs or good paying jobs that provide people a, a way out of the middle class. So I, I think we have to counterbalance that, right? I mean, we can't have it all and then nothing and, and have millions of people lose their good paying jobs and their way into the middle class. So I think we always have to keep in mind that there's a human element to every decision that you make as a legislator in Harrisburg, and that's just one part of it. Thank you. Should the state be charging the fracking industry to repair the damages caused by fracking? And if so, what fees should be charged and how should those funds be dis dispersed? You know, yes, 100%, absolutely. Who knows the chemicals that these fracking companies are putting into the groundwater um, in, in areas uh, around the state. So, you know, what that actual number is, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, and, I, and I would be wary of any candidate who comes on here and says, it has to be 10%, 20%. The reality is, is that there are political considerations as well as the human considerations that need to be taken into account in these type of decisions. Uh, and so I, what I don't want to do is give you a, a wrong number and then end up having to eat my words when um, I have to do something else. Okay. What do you think are common sense gun violence controls that the state should have in place? Yeah, you know, in a city like Reading, you know, I live a block away from uh, a quadruple homicide that happened a year ago. Uh, so this is very visceral to me. It's very real to me and my family. And so number one, I think we can pass uh, common sense gun reform uh, by having a more expanded background check by, you know, uh, mandating that uh, anybody who owns a gun require it to have it in their locker locked up safe 
uh, potentially moving into a digital era where, you know, now we, we ask them to have fingerprint scanners on the guns that they buy so that no one else can use them besides the owner of the gun. So there are a lot of innovative things that we can think about. But of course, we have to think about the thousands of people who die in our country every day um, and, and across the world due to gun violence. And we clearly need to do more. Okay. Does, it will take 30 seconds for this next question. Sure. Discrimination in housing and employment against LGBTQ plus people is still legal in Pennsylvania. Sure sure Should is. we have laws to stop this discrimination? 100% yes. Uh, it's, it's a damn shame that in 2020, we're even still having this, this, this conversation. I'll tie it back to, unfortunately, the legislature in Harrisburg that just believes that people, minorities in general, including members of the LGBT community, don't matter and don't exist. Uh, so until we change both the leadership in Harrisburg by electing more Democrats, um, we won't see a bill, unfortunately. But I believe that that's going to be coming very soon once we take over both the House and the Senate. Thank you. And that takes us to our close. You have about 30 seconds to make a closing statement. Great. Well, uh, thank you. I, I want to thank you, Judith. I want to thank the League of Women Voters, and I want to thank uh, BCTV for putting this all together. You know, for me, um, I'm a person who believes in values. And just today, I was, I was looking at some signs, some big signs that I just bought and saw my name. And, and it made me think about that, the amazingness of seeing my name on something like that, but also the reason why I even got there was because of people who helped me along the way people who believed in me, people who gave me words of encouragement, people who never let me quit uh, when I wanted to quit. And so that is what I want to be as a next day legislator. I want to be the hope, the future of our city, the future of our district. And I'm very hopeful that with your vote and support on June 2nd, we'll write a new chapter for the city of Reading uh, and the 127th legislative district. Thank you, Mr. Guzman, for sharing your message with our BCTV viewers. And before we close, I remind our viewers that there are four other candidates in the race, Robert Melendez, Cedar Cepeda, Robin Costenbader Jacobson, and Raymond Bigger. I encourage you to watch their interviews so you're fully informed when you vote. Thank you, good day. We make about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is.